Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! And I'd quite happily talk about football for three hours, but I don't really have the qualifications. So we will be turning our attention later in the programme to the uh, police advice on sunbathing naked in your own back garden. I think that's an absolutely fascinating sort of melange of, of civil liberties and legislation. The, the notion that an Englishman's home is his castle unless he takes his keks off in his back garden, in which case it turns out he's subject to the long arm of the law. Um, <laughs> I don't sunbathe naked in my back garden, or indeed my front garden, which would be particularly problematical given the architecture of my street. But I kind of feel that if I wanted to, I should have the right. So we will get stuck into that, I think, from 12 noon. I'll probably treat you to the tale of how I ended up on a nudist beach by accident last summer, but um, not while you're eating, eh? Uh, we will also, I think, well, be catching up on PMQs most definitely and, uh, and looking at first at Vote Leave. And uh, a, a strange story, quite a sad... Oh, and I want to talk about the London mayor. I want to talk about the failure of the Conservatives to find any heavy hitters to stand against Sadiq Khan, who I would have thought was... Uh, vulnerable's not necessarily quite the right word, but I certainly would have thought he was beatable. Um, when we hosted the State of London debate last week, there was quite a lot of anger in the room, not, not just from the sort of headbangers, but from normal, thoughtful people as well. A lot of anger about his failure to tackle knife crime, his perceived failure to tackle knife crime. So why wouldn't the Conservatives want to have a crack at City Hall? Uh, is London lost forever to the Labour Party? Even though the Labour Party itself is in all sorts of um, fracture and division at the moment. Over 70% of Labour voters now keen to remain in the European Union or of the view that everything's going horribly wrong and yet Jeremy Corbyn continues to pander to the 20-something percent on the, on the other side of the fence. All, all of that under discussion probably in the second hour. Um, but let's begin with the news from Russia that the Colombian manager is refusing to accept the results of last night's football game and uh, complaining to the BBC that he hasn't been allowed to share his opinions with either the referee or FIFA. I'm only joking. The head of the Vote Leave campaign, who is about to be found guilty, which is about to be found guilty of four charges of breaking electoral law, has been complaining to the BBC about not being allowed to share his opinions with the independent regulator that is the Electoral Commission. And what we're going to do today is a kind of what's going on, yeah? I could do that every day. I, I felt, you know, almost every day for the last two years we could come on air and go, what's going on? Program brought to you by Marvin Gaye. And, <laughs> and I can't do it every day because obviously I have to um, I have to earn my wages. <laughs> and that generally involves me putting a little bit of thought and effort into the questions like, what, Guan? What's going on? Give me a ring. Uh, yeah, maybe one day. But today we are going to let ourselves... Um, have a little go at this question because it's 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 a massive story really the idea that the um the major the official brexit campaign headed by boris johnson and michael gove cheated four charges of breaking electoral law you know now that we've become so entrenched in in blind tribalism that this won't cut much mustard in the areas where it really should it's it's a bit like you know setting up Trump's epic, epic malfeasance against Hillary Clinton's email server, this ludicrous notion of, of balance and false equivalence that sort of puts a serial self-confessed sex offender on one side of the fence and then on the other says, yeah, but she, she sent some emails. Oh. Uh, and it's happening with Brexit. It's, it's one of the biggest parallels with Brexit, actually, in that it, the rules don't apply equally to both sides. So I don't care if my side cheated. I just care that your side lost. Get over it or whatever the phrase may be. And, and that is really quite tragic because the Electoral Commission um, is all we've got when it comes to free and fair elections. It's, it's literally all we've got. And when they conclude that the referendum was neither free nor fair because one side 
was guilty of four charges of breaking electoral law. That's a massive story. But let me tell you what's happened today, because I think it's really interesting. Phone lines are open, 0345 6060 973 is the number you need. I, I, I'm just really interested in what you think about this story today. In fact, both topics are going to be thoughtful rather than evidence and uh, experience-based. I, I want to know why you think the Tories aren't really going to fight for the London mayoralty next time out. And I want to know what you think about this story. 0345 973 is the number that you need. Um, because the way it's broken down is this. The draft report from the Electoral Commission is, is sent to all interested parties. It apparently finds the Vote Leave campaign bang to rights. So the Vote Leave campaign then embarks upon a sort of news management exercise. It's headed up by the fellow that started the Taxpayers Alliance, uh, another one of those organisations that pops up on... Well, I can't say the BBC, they pop up on here all the time without anybody ever telling me where their money comes from. The notion it's called the taxpayers. If you want to set up a think tank, just, just find someone very, very rich to give you some money in secret and you'll be on the Today programme by tea time. Well, not by tea time because they, they finish in the mornings, but you'll be on the Today programme by the end of the week. The, the, the James O'Brien Institute of Free Thinking and Industrial Thought. And now we're joined by James O'Brien from the James O'Brien Institute of Free Thinking and Industrial Thought. Well, what do you think, James? Whatever my very rich, mysterious and unidentified donor wants me to think, boss, John. Is that all right? Well, yeah, great. Well done. Splendid. Mm. So this fella has come out already, Matthew Elliott, his name is, to um, uh, reject the findings, to claim that they've been unfairly treated, just like the Colombian manager who's refusing to accept the results of the football last night and complaining that the referee won't listen to his opinions. And the BBC have colluded in this process, and I don't know how much criticism they deserve. I've given them quite a lot of criticism on Twitter, but, I mean, what do you do if they're your source for the story? So the Electoral Commission report hasn't been published yet, and then one of the people that have seen the draft report come to you and say, well, look, we'll give you the gen on what's in the report, but you have to let us put our denial in as well. And the BBC turn around and say, yeah, all right. So the story ends up being um, top line, the official Brexit campaign is expected to be found guilty of four charges of breaking electoral law, fourth line, but the group's former chief executive, blah, 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 blah. That, that to me is a real problem. It'd be a bit like a, a, a criminal conviction, which you may well be intending to appeal as the convicted party being reported by the BBC with the intention to appeal in the fourth line. You don't get that, you know? You, you, you get done for burglary, you get written up in the newspapers. It doesn't say in the fourth line, the burglar still denies all charges, does it? Something very odd, to my mind, something very odd about, about today's development. So I, I, I don't think that the BBC's news coverage has been biased. I think a lot of the interview-based um, arguments they do are horribly biased because they've, they've bought into this ludicrous notion of false equivalence. You know, here, here are pretty much the, the, the entire scientific community of the world explaining to you what climate change is caused by. Oh, and here's Nigel Lawson, who used to be Chancellor and has written a book about it from the House in France that he's applied to stay in despite being one of the key members of the Vote Leave campaign. Holy maloli. So it's not the news coverage that's skewed normally but on this occasion i just want to know what you think and and i guess it's probably a complete waste of breath on my part but it, it, if, if you're still buying into the idea that the unicorns are coming um I'm, I'm i'm almost feeling more love towards you now than i have at any point in the last two years because the effort you must be putting in to keeping the delusion alive it must be so exhausting I really admire your mental strength. It's quite incredible. to It's a bit like being a sort of cultist right up until the point when it turns out that the world didn't end on the day that the bloke you've been giving all your money to for the last 20 years told you it was going to end. What do you do the day after? I dread to think. But try, if you can, um, instead of uh, tweeting me uh, abuse from anonymous accounts, give me a ring and imagine that it was the other way around. Just imagine what you would be doing as a sort of chomping xenophobe Imagine you weren't a chomping xenophobe. Imagine you were objective and evidence-based. And it turned out that the Remain campaign had been found guilty of four charges of breaking electoral law. I mean, that, that's what we've lost. That's what we've lost is any semblance of objectivity. Any, any semblance at all of rules being applied equally to both sides. So I oddly, and I think this is one of the curses of having quite a liberal world view... I get angrier when someone on my side does something wrong. 
than I do when someone on the other side does. That's, that's the really weird thing. So if somebody is um, setting themselves up as an arbiter of honesty, as opposed to being quite open about being a massive liar, then when they turn out not to have been telling the truth, it's doubly difficult to deal with. So if, if the Remain campaign, which was unbelievably awful, and which today's story proves why they were so awful, because the, the Electoral Commission is evidence-based and independent, so they don't have a line to spin in the same way that the Remain campaign was essentially evidence-based and independent. They didn't really have a line to spin. All they were selling was things will carry on like they are. The Leave campaign can promise the earth to everybody. 17 and a half million different promises made to 17 and a half million people, all of which they insisted would come true. And you see today, because Vote Leave have to spin and the Electoral Commission can't, you see what happens. It's that phrase I've shared with you a few times. Is the Remain campaign turned up to a, a knife fight with, a, with a, a pair of borrowed boxing gloves and a battered copy of the Queensbury Rules? And they don't deny it. I mean, they talk, in, in, if you read Tim Shipman's books on the issue, they're quite open about the fact that, 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 that they thought that facts were a waste of time. And what you really need to do is just play emotional cards, whether they're true or not, that get people to respond. Cue the bus, you know? Cue for the for the toxic side of the Leave campaign is not the Vote Leave outfit, the other shower. Cue the the racist breaking point poster. Don't care about facts and truth. Just just get the emotions out there. And now, two years later, organisations like the Electoral Commission that focus solely on evidence and fact and have nothing whatsoever to do with emotion and spin are beginning to dig up the bodies. Months ago, Channel 4 News and The Observer broadcast the extraordinary claims of a whistleblower who claimed Vote Leave broke the law on spending in the 2016 Brexit referendum. Those claims reignited an Electoral Commission investigation into the actions of the official Leave campaign. Today, in a preemptive strike, the Leave campaign itself leaked the Commission's preliminary findings that they had indeed broken the law in four separate ways, claiming they had always acted within the spirit and letter of the law. Our political correspondent, Michael Crick, has this report. It was this report on Channel 4 News in March which helped reignite the Electoral Commission's inquiries into vote leave spending during the referendum. Our report included powerful testimony from a whistleblower who said vote leave overspent by diverting surplus funds to another campaign called Bee Leave. In effect, they used Bee Leave to overspend and not just by a small amount. Almost two thirds of a million pounds makes all the difference. And it wasn't legal. Like it wasn't, it, they say that it wasn't coordinated, but it was. Shamir Sani said that B Leave, run by his student friend Darren Grimes, was effectively controlled by Vote Leave. And last night it emerged the Electoral Commission think in their preliminary findings that Vote Leave are guilty of four offenses under election law. Vote Leave appeared to break that news themselves as they gave interviews to two TV channels. Good morning, Mr Elliot. But not this one. So the Electoral Commission seemed to think that you're uh, guilty of four, on four fronts. So we caught up with Matthew Elliot this morning. Why don't you want to say anything about that? I've done my interviews today. What about doing an interview with Channel 4 News? It was a bit of a oh, fiddle, wasn't work. it? Setting up this Believe, channeling your excess funds through them. Are you really expecting us to believe that Darren Grimes made the decision independently to spend that money on AIQ? It completely wasn't a fiddle. It completely wasn't a fiddle? Yeah. Why not? It's an honest donation to another campaign, which the High Court have said was entirely fine. But that campaign, run by a 23-year-old, spends the money you give it on the same organisation that you're using. Are you really expecting us to believe they made that decision independently? Lots of people use common vendors. That's very common in campaigns. If you look at the Remain campaign, they had common vendors on all sides. So it's very usual for campaigns to have these common vendors. But Mr Grimes was working in your office. He's one of your people, really, wasn't he? He wasn't working in our office 100%. He was never in the office. He visited the office as an activist every now and again, but he didn't work from the office or have a desk. It was around quarter to five last night, I'm told, just 15 minutes ahead of the official deadline, that Vote Leave turned up here at the Electoral Commission 
with a box of paperwork. And now Commission staff are going through that evidence to see whether it makes any difference to the four charges that they have against Vote Leave. But the Commission seems pretty annoyed at the way Vote Leave has gone to the media before the official process is completed and are complaining that the Commission hasn't actually asked to see them to hear their side of the case. Jolian Morm is the anti-Brexit QC who first referred Vote Leave spending to the Commission two years ago. It looks to me as though it's an attempt to uh, uh, front run um, what's going to be a very, very damaging uh, electoral commission report revealing that uh, vote leave um, fundamentally cheated in this very important referendum. They say that they're not getting a fair hearing, that they, they've not been interviewed by the electoral commission. That seems extraordinary. Well, there were months and months and months of correspondence, and indeed Matthew Elliott is on the record in pieces he's written for The Times as saying that he closely engaged virtually every day with the electoral commission. So if that is what he says, um, it bears uh, examination. You've put in this dossier to the Electoral Commission. We have, yes. And why do you think they didn't interview you? I don't know. We're disappointed they didn't, because really, you know, it's important they listen to both sides of the arguments. They listen to the sort of so-called whistleblowers that you guys at Channel 4 had on a lot, and they didn't listen to our side of the story. Matthew Elliott, Vote Leave and Darren Grimes all deny cheating. They fully complied with the law, they say, and the referendum rules. The Election Commission report is due in a matter of weeks. But today, Vote Leave co-convener Michael Gove suggested that even then, the Commission's verdict might be challenged in the courts. Well, of course, we did ask to talk to Vote Leave and several Cabinet Ministers, including Boris Johnson, Michael Gove and Chris Grayling, as well as former Minister, the MP Priti Patel, but none of them would speak to us tonight. And I, I just think we're so entrenched now that people, um, well, people do care, but they have to convince themselves that they don't. So the immense effort today from the unicornists will be dedicated to somehow claiming false comparisons with that government leaflet that came through our letterbox, as if governments aren't elected to do what they think is in the best interest of the country. I don't want governments to do what's in the best interest of the country, in their, in their view. I want them to do the opposite. They should have been campaigning to leave, which they all thought would be a complete disaster. And... And this story should be huge, but I know that it won't be. 03456060973 is the number you need. What's going on? What, 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 do, you, what, what do you think has, has, has happened to our democracy? If, if the independent electoral regulator, the only protection we have, really, against fraud and malfeasance in elections is essentially getting beaten up by people that they're about to find guilty of breaking electoral law all over the British media today. Um, I should also add that I, 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 I don't make it up as I go along. That would be a wrong way of putting it. But increasingly, there are no guides, I've found, much to my shock and dismay. I've said to you in the past, there are no grown-ups. It's one of the reasons why, for I mean, unbelievably, why, why this programme has... Um, achieved such a high profile in the last year and a half or so because they're, they're, I, I just keep waiting for the grown-ups to turn up and to, to sort of say, well, look, obviously, obviously it was been a terrible mistake to elect a fascist to be president of the United States of America or to sit there and say, well, look, obviously all the lies and deceptions that were used to persuade people to vote to leave the European Union while a lot of the liars and deceivers were making millions of pounds out of it, we now know, um, Obviously, we're going to come along and fix it. All we've got is organisations like the Electoral Commission. That's all we've got. The protections on our democracy are... What's the word I'm looking for? They're almost crippled by their own honesty. What are you going to do? It's, 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 I mean, it is literally the speak-your-weight machine, isn't it, the Electoral Commission? And then they have found the ghost train guilty of four charges of breaking electoral law, but the ghost train is already controlling the story. 03456060973 is the number that you need. What do you think is going on? It's 1017. Vote leave cheated. What contortions do you think that the unicornists will employ to pretend that it doesn't matter? 03456060973 is the number that you need. And and I kind of want I kind of want someone to come along and just be really clever. 
Do you know what I mean? Just 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 to come along and ex- just put pull it all together. I always thought, even on newspapers, I always thought there's someone upstairs who gets it all. Do you, do you know what I mean? There's somebody upstairs who gets it all. And I don't think there is anymore. So who does get it? Hit the numbers now. You will get through. Ali is in Slough. Ali, what would you like to say? Morning, James. Hi. I just want to draw a comparison with... Uh, do you remember the fiasco over in Tower Hamlets with Lutfi Rahman, the guy who was found to have been playing the system? Yes. As the man. The pile of bricks and the whole unif- universe came down upon him. And the vote leave campaign have cheated and not played by the rules, and yet nobody seems to give the monkeys. I mean... Why the disparity in treatment? He, he was he was removed, having been found guilty of electoral fraud. I think it took a bit longer than some people felt it should have done, but um, but that, I don't normally like these sort of whataboutaries. But that's that's the nearest example we've got, is it? I can't think of anything. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. And to be honest, in any other walk of life, if you cheat and get, get something, whether either by nicking it or by not playing by the rules in a game or a competition. You're disqualified. That's what justice demands, doesn't it? I mean, how would that work, though? Well, the reality of it is, look, I mean... Do you no, know no, but do you know, here's the thing, though, is that you still will have millions and millions of people who deny that they've been victims of a cheat. They, they say, I don't care, even if they didn't spend any money at all, I, I would have voted that way because of fish. Well, and the blue passport, of course. Yes. But look, the, the point here is the, the law is the law, and if the law says cheating is not to be uh, condoned, and anything you gain by cheating, then the law takes precedent. This is what happened with Gina Miller. When Gina Miller took the case, everybody was threatened down from the guy the colour of her skin and everything else, that this was not to do with Brexit, but it was some, you know, goody person trying to subvert the will of the people. If you've been duped and cheated into doing something, then you're equally a victim. It's rather like people are groomed and abused. Well, no, I thought it was all right, because he's my mate, wasn't he? Uh, I mean, there's no prospect of any. I mean, the 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 the, the proposal, as 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 it's understood from this draft report that's been leaked, there there will be fines, and there may be um, referrals to the police. But there's no suggestion anywhere that it could impact on the actual result of the election because there's no one's been put in power. It's not like look for Rahman, is it? Because you, 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 he gets found guilty of electoral fraud. They, they take him out of power. There's not a winner. There's not a winner of the referendum in the sense of, of there's the bloke with the gold medal around his neck. Do you see what no, I mean? I, well, the, the answer to that would be this. The, the win or lose scenario here is the British public because if... Yeah, but it's not, is it? Because the British public will be queuing up to claim that, that they don't believe it or they don't care. Um, many just wait, wait there a second. Gary's in Enfield. Gary, I'll be with you in a minute. Are you going to tell me that you don't believe it or you don't care? Sorry, you took me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, I, quite frankly, I made my decisions without having to resort to whatever marketing campaign, any of the yeah, campaigns. But, uh, just very did. briefly, because I'm just going to finish with Ali first. Are you going to tell no, me that no, you, yeah, don't, you don't, don't believe this story or you don't care about it? I'm not really care about it because... Not yeah, OK, so there you go, Ali. I told you. They'll be queuing up to say they don't believe it or they don't care about it. So we can't talk about the British public. I mean, to be honest with you, the people that won in uh, Tower Hamlets, they didn't care to who tied them. Why was the problem kicked out and made bankrupt? So, w- so where then does where is the pressure? Where is the pressure supposed to come from? I don't, I don't know. Twenty-four minutes after ten, I do know that, that people won't care. Here is the Electoral Commission. The independent regulator has found that one side in the biggest vote the country's ever undertaken cheated. But Gary doesn't care. Why don't you care, Gary? Because I made up my mind long, long before the um, the the referendum took place as you know uh, there was many incidents leading up to this moment about the amount of money that we paid europe our ability to govern ourselves and many other issues as well so i made up my mind and and the people in the, but the money is the money is it. spent and and the two things that you've suggested are certainly at the very least open to a question the money is spent of course on getting out the messages that you've just described so anybody who received those messages more loudly than they should have done under the context of the electoral law has been defrauded so why don't you care well, I, you know, first of all, prove that he did have the kind of effect, you know. The only way you can do that is asking the people themselves. No, 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 no of course it isn't. Of course it isn't, because no one's going to know why they voted the way that they voted. They're not going to be aware of yeah. all of the influences that they were subjected to and not subjected to. And a lot of people are still labouring under epic, epic delusions and falsehoods about almost every level of the referendum. They spend the money to get the messages out. The reason why there are limits on how much money they can spend is to ensure a level playing field. This, this report will conclude that the playing field was not level, but you're comfortable with playing on a 
on a cheats charter? And I, I just want, in your own words, to understand why. Well, this is this question about how much you spent on marketing your No, 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 no. The rules are clear and they've been broken. And I want to know why you're comfortable living in a, in a, in a legal and electoral environment where rules are, are patently broken. What's the point? I know. Let me phrase the question differently. What's the point of rules, Gary? Um, there are rules for uh, a certain, I suppose, aspect in, in governing whatever you want to do in life, I guess. And, and that, that, that doesn't mean anything. Just, what, what is the but point? What is the point of rules in the context of elections? But, well, I think in this particular, let's look at this particular matter. Are we clutching straws after two years coming out with this? Is that, no, is that, we're, we're, we're looking you know, at four charges of breaking electoral law being upheld. So I'll ask you again, what is the point of rules in elections? Uh, well, I guess I'm satisfied because the outcome was what I wanted. So yeah. I'm not particularly bothered. What is the point, what is the point of rules in elections? Well, I think we all break rules, but as long yeah. as it doesn't hurt anybody. What is the and, point uh, of rules? What are they there for? Uh, to adhere to them, I guess. And why, why is it important that they're adhered to? Well, I guess uh, to have some kind of common ground, a belief. Uh, no. Well, why is it important things. that rules are adhered to? Well, I'm not eloquent enough to explain that. I know in my mind why they should be. but Because well, uh, you rang in important. saying, you rang in to tell me that they're not important and they shouldn't be well, adhered to I and you didn't care if they were broken. I rang in to say it doesn't bother me because yes. it didn't influence me. Because, it didn't influence because me in particular. they cheated. If you, well, it, I don't think cheat comes And, and we mind. know why. Well, yeah. what word would you use for breaking breaking the law? Look, I don't, I don't think that the, that a kind of same kind of crime, if you want to speak that way, as rigging votes or, or, or other things that are far more serious than that. Okay, for, well, that's what the Electoral government. Commission are there for, to impose the rules, but you've phoned in to tell me that you don't well, care about the Electoral on... Commission's role in imposing rules. So let's go back to that. Let's just go back briefly to the question of, of why the rules that you rang in to tell me you didn't care about are actually important, because I'm glad we've made that journey together. Because you know the answer. You don't have to be eloquent to say, because if the rules are broken, the result is invalid, Gary. Well, I'm just curious at how all these come up after two years. It's so taken two years to investigate it, it because... Well, you know, are there games played on our both sides? Which, which led well, that can be, investi that can be investigated as well. You're suggesting that the Electoral Commission isn't independent now, are you? Well, it seems everyone's have a point of view and whichever... Uh, no, 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 independent is the opposite of having a point of view. So are you suggesting the Electoral Commission isn't independent? The only independent regulator governing electoral law isn't independent because they found a side you like broke the rules. That's what you've rung well, in to tell who, me. Who actually, who actually uh, <laughs> instigated this, you know, and, and, and is it been, if, and if it comes to the court of law and he's actually... Mate, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, right. I'm not Google, well, Gary. I, I we both know... Where you're coming from well, no, it's not a question of where I'm coming from. It's a very simple I, uh, question of you not caring about rules being broken because you liked the result that was delivered in circumstances that can now be fairly described as invalid. And that is kind of how terrible things happen throughout history under the guise of democracy. It's how Vladimir Putin gets a 97% result in an election because the rules by which everybody has to abide don't exist. They still exist here, but as you beautifully and brilliantly have highlighted, people are so entrenched now in their own delusion and denial that they're going to try to convince themselves that they don't care about the only protection our democracy has from electoral fraud, from misspending, misallocation of funds. I don't care. Why not? Oh, well, I got the result that I wanted. Why, why did you want that result? Well, um, oh, fish, James. And passports. Imagine if, um, when during the penalties last night, Colombia claimed that the one Jordan Pickford saved had gone in, and we didn't have VAR, and they just refused to carry on playing until the referee agreed with them. That's why rules are important, Gary. That's why rules are important, yeah? But of course, to leave us today, they're not important. Why? Well, because it turns out that their godfathers broke them. Well, why aren't rules important? Well, because they were only really broken by my side. And this is how authoritarianism happens, you know? We, we can still look slightly askance at events in America, but we're not that far behind. We're not that far behind. This is how it happens. As, as you say, well, the rules don't apply to that big silverback gorilla over there. They only apply to the little people. And in fact, I'd quite like more rules for, for people who are different. I'd like more rules for, for gays or foreigners or immigrants. They should have different rules from the rest of That's how it happens. So what are, we, what are we learning today from the Leave campaign? Rules don't matter. Doesn't matter if they broke electoral law. Doesn't matter.
Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three is the number to call if you can share with me the contortions that you're currently undergoing to convince yourself that rules don't matter and breaking the law is unimportant. You're all welcome, always, you know that. 10.35 is the time. And speaking of authoritarianism, shame and hypocrisy, Esther McVeigh is in the news, um, taking a, a proper um, coating from the head of the National Audit Office for lying, I think is the technical term. Uh, incorrect claims about universal credit. She's been blasted by the watchdog, the independent regulator, well not regulator, it's just a watchdog, the National Audit Office published a damning report on universal credit which had been shared with her department. Here you go. This is astonishing. Um, our report was fully agreed with senior officials in your department. It is based on the most accurate and up-to-date information from your department. Your department confirmed this to me in writing on Wednesday the 6th of June, and we then reached final agreement on the report on Friday the 8th of June. It is odd that by Friday the 15th of June, you felt able to say that the National Audit Office did not take into account the impact of our recent changes. You reiterated these statements on the 2nd of July, but we... National Audit Office have seen no evidence of such impacts nor fresh information. And he goes further, I'm afraid your statement on the 2nd of July that the National Audit Office was concerned universal credit is currently rolling out too slowly and needs to continue at a faster rate is also not correct. So you now have a, a story here which involves you having to decide whether Esther McVeigh is so stupid that she doesn't understand single syllable English or lying. There doesn't seem to me to be a third way. Um, I'm afraid your statement on the 2nd of July that the National Audit Office was concerned universal credit is currently rolling out too slowly and needs to continue at a faster rate is also not correct. So now you have to decide whether or not Estimate Vey dreamt this and genuinely believed it to be true. We've all been there. We've all woken up and, and, and just for a minute before we go our head together, we, we sort of think, oh, good grief, did, it, did that... Did that really happen? Did the boss really tell me last night that Eddie Mayer is joining LBC, the, uh, the finest broadcaster in Britain, joining the second finest on the same radio station? That's absolutely mate. And then you realise, oh, God, that actually did happen. That wasn't a dream. And that is what Esther McVeigh has done. Either she's dreamt what she says the National Audit Office said and genuinely believed it when she said it, even though it had all come to her in a dream, or she made it up. And she's a Secretary of State. For work and pension. Secretary of State. You know? Kind of plays in a bit to the story about the Electoral Commission being poised to find vote leave guilty of four counts of um, uh, bad behaviour in the referendum campaign. Four breaches of electoral law, let's call a spade a spade. And um, what's going to happen to them? Why do you think they've mounted such a massive rearguard action? They know how big this story is, but they're absolutely determined to make sure that you don't. That's like the referendum campaign in a nutshell. Just tell them to give them something, give them a slogan, give them a give them a give them something to wave, give them a banner, give them a, I don't know, a bit of gate our country back or something, reclaim our laws, some old nonsense that doesn't mean anything. And they get people who don't like thinking will thank you for being given a slogan. What did Estimate Vade? She came out and just told well, I mean, I will go with lies, actually. You better alert the lawyers. Because I, I, I can't see how anyone could be that stupid as to actually believe the opposite of what her own department has agreed with the National Audit Office. This is in many ways the line, isn't it? Our report was fully agreed with senior officials in your department. H how can anybody keep their job? It would be like me coming on air at LBC and, and telling you the opposite of what was true. Actually, that's not a very good example because there is someone on the payroll that does that every day. Um, it would be like me coming on air and telling you the opposite of what was true in a legal way rather than just a, a snake oil propaganda racist way. I've been telling you outright lies on the radio, passing it off as news and fact. I wouldn't expect... My feet shouldn't touch the floor on the way out of that door. She has gone public in direct contradiction of the facts. Listen to this. Our report was fully agreed with senior officials in your department. It is based on the most accurate and up-to-date information from your department. Wrote to her on the 27th of June asking to have a meeting about this. She hasn't found time for him, so he's had to go public with this letter. Following your second state set of statements in the House of Commons about the report, I'm now reluctantly writing an open letter to you to clarify the facts. 
Remember when Trump's woman stood up and talked about alternative facts and we all sniggered? Esther McVeigh has brought alternative facts onto the floor of the House of Commons. And make no mistake, alternative facts is a euphemism for bare-faced, self-serving, politically motivated, ideologically driven lies. And she'll get away with it, just like Vote Leave are going to get away with it. Because we are so far down the rabbit hole, led there by the Daily Mail and the Sun, the Express and the Telegraph, and a few people who do what I do for a living, and a few other people who are kind of pantomime toffs and pretend politicians, spivs and snake oil salesmen, liars and ghost train ticket sellers, have led us so far into the darkness now that we've got a Secretary of State lying in the House of Commons and the successful Vote Leave campaign being busted for breaking electoral law. And hey, psh, so what? will of the people, innit? Brexit means Brexit. Kevin's in Wallingham. Sorry, Kevin, I went off on one then, unexpectedly. I hope you can remember why you rang in. Um, well, just about, mind you, the estimate they did cheer me up a little. Why? That she's been caught? <laughs> well, at last. Yeah, but nothing will happen, mate. It's, this is the worst thing about being a parent at the moment, is you try and teach your children that actions have consequences, and they say, that, well, what about estimate? Well, actually, not even my children say that, but you, you see what I mean. Actions don't have consequences. We broke the electoral law four times. Yeah, but never mind. We'll just phone a mate at the BBC, get the story spun to make us look like the victims. We, we lied on the floor of the House of Commons. Doesn't matter. The uh, leader of the opposition can't land a punch on a... On a wet lettuce. Uh, I, I, anyway, I said I was going to stop digressing, Kevin. Don't let me go off on one like this. Mm. Rain me in, Kevin. Rain me in. Well, you almost you, you set me back a step there because you can't resist having, <laughs> having no. a little pop at the uh, leader of the op opposition. No, well, no, let's um, not go down that road. Sometimes unjustified, but if we go to the BBC, yes. um, you know, the thing that's been created there is for years uh, you spend um, a lot of time and investment creating the illusion that it's incredibly left wing, it's riddled with socialists and all the evil bogeymen we should be aware of that are undermining our democracy and then you turn it into a revolving door where you have people coming in and out from uh, well, the list you've just given, the yeah. Express the Mail and, and um, the think tanks, you and, know, which are and, basically just people who oh. aren't good enough to get hired as newspaper columnists getting treated like newspaper columnists because they've set up an organisation with money they haven't declared or revealed and called themselves the James O'Brien Institute of Freedom and Forward Thinking. Well, that's right. The, ta the Taxpayers Alliance being a major... Job if. It's always, it's always sold and rolled out when needed. As Same fella. The bloke that's out of the Taxpayers your, Alliance is the chief executive service. of Vote Leave. Stop talking over me when I'm talking over you. It's the same bloke, mate. It's, I mean, the, it's, it's so incredible. Oh, I, I, absolutely. I've yeah, done a lot, a lot of reading on these guys, and it's quite amazing. But, you know, the smoke screens that's created now, I mean, these people run it. They run it. They have the links to the BBC, to the heart of it all. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't, I've worked at the BBC, and to be honest, mate, I had to stop working at the BBC so I could carry on shooting my mouth off on LBC and, and indeed on Twitter. And, and, I, and, I, and you, I, you're not going to like me for saying this, and I'm grateful to you for ringing in, and I'm sorry that I said something rude about the dear leader, but you're wrong, <laughs> all right? You're just wrong. The, the mistakes mm. and the bias and the imbalance comes in when they book these people to have a debate with fact-based, evidence-led contributors. That's your Nigel Lawson versus science type interview, which they've got into trouble for. You see it with MMR, you know, you go back to the MMR scandal, the Daily Mail, of course, on the side of the anti-vaccine brigade. And that gets reported in a way that allows now another measles epidemic to be sweeping the country. You see it with climate change, you see it with MMR, you see it with poor old Charlie Gard, the idea that some um, fag packet fascist can turn up at Great Ormond Street with a film crew because the doctors don't know what they're doing. And then, of course, it will turn out subsequently that there are deep links with dark American money dedicated to not letting proper health care kick in. And, and so there are conspiracies there, but the BBC are not complicit in the conspiracies. They're I, just too trusting and naive. Uh, I'm, well, I'll, I'll beg to disagree you with you uh, Well, how many but times have you presented Newsnight? The, the, re, the, re, the reason that I, I found it... Well, well, I haven't. And I, I haven't <laughs> you pro you so probably do a better job than me, so there's, scratch that there's, question. There's, 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 there's a <laughs> There's a decision. Well, perhaps if you're moving to LPC and, and your current town at the moment, which yeah. um, gets me going every day. That's what we're here for. You, you know, you're doing a good job um, actually discussing some of these things because they're not openly discussed elsewhere. And I would say we're waking up this morning all the point you're raising with the vote leave issues. 
yes. and, and breaking the, ele the, the electoral law. Doesn't matter, though. You, 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 Doesn't you matter. You lost, get you over know, it. What about... What about Cambridge Analytica? You know, it comes out about Cambridge Analytica, the work they're doing, the type of work they're doing on a global scale, not just locally. Mm. And and all of a sudden, it looks like it's being exposed. It, it's, you know, it's opened up a little crack in the door that we're looking through. And then within the next 10 minutes, we're talking about Facebook. Well, yeah, but that's probably us more than the news. About, we're, talk, we're talking about Facebook. We're talking about the Russians. No, it's got nothing to do with Cambridge Analytica. You know, they, oh, you, you're, you're looking in the wrong direction. Cambridge Analytica have been looking to influence elections and made decisions for years. The, the Europe, you know, but this the, is the problem, the isn't it? Is elections. that people people don't feel you, you're never going to get this story up and running as long as people don't feel that they've been duped. You know, have you seen the stuff on Twitter about no go zones and Sharia patrols in London that gets punted by people in Texas? All these people that have never left Idaho, who are experts on Sweden, they, they don't realise that they've been conned and, and they they enjoy the anger. I think there's a dopamine hit from being furiously ignorant or ignorantly furious or both. There's a dopamine hit that comes from it. What am I going to do tonight? I'm going to go on the internet and find more stuff to get angry about. Is it true? Don't care. As long as I get angry, I get the emotional hit. The chemicals get released in my brain. Ooh, anger. It's great. Okay, here's something to get angry about. Vote leave cheated. Oh, no, I'm not angry about that. No. Fish. Passports. Okay, here's something to get angry about. Secretary of State for Work and Pensions lied in the House of Commons. Oh, no, I'm not angry about that because I, I am right wing. What does that mean? I don't know, really. Are you rich? No. So there's two types of, of right-wingers, millionaires and mugs. If you want to work out which one you are, look in your wallet. Thinking caps today, because, I, I, I mean, there must be a, a sort of catch-all answer, mustn't there? About why the Conservatives, no heavy hitters, are going to run for London Mayor against Sadiq Khan. And, and if you're not listening in London, and I appreciate a significant number of people are not, um... It really matters because, we, I mean, we are the capital city. I appreciate we're not as important as we think we are to the rest of the country in a, in a kind of day-to-day -day sense. Economically, we're, we're even more important than we think we are here in London. But I grew up in Kidderminster. I, I, I don't have London lenses in my rose-tinted spectacles. Boris Johnson won twice, um, beat Ken Livingstone. Ken Livingstone beat the Labour candidate when he was first elected mayor. People often forget that. Frank Dobson was the official Labour candidate. Livingstone ran as an independent. His, uh, his problems with membership of the Labour Party are not new. <laughs> um, so why are the Conservatives... Why does no big beast want to have a crack at it? Is it because they tried the Islamophobic angle with Zach Goldsmith and it didn't work and that's all they've got? I, I, I'm, that can't be it. I can, is it because they just don't have the personnel? If you think that we're looking at a, a, a Conservative Party that considers Chris Grayling to be cabinet material and has a department, a Secretary of State for Work and Pensions, who's been accused this morning of essentially lying by the National Audit Office. I mean, but, but you would have thought, you know, the Evening Standard will be on side, won't it, with George Osborne as editor? Not perhaps quite as slavish in his support for whoever the Tories choose as the last editor of the Evening Standard was for Boris Johnson. But well, that's half the battle. There'll be a warm welcome here in, in, in the LBC studios for whoever runs. Why on earth don't... I, 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 <clears throat> at risk of inviting um, comedy, I would love to hear your theories. I'd love to hear your idea of why the Conservatives are not having a crack at, at City Hall in the, in the next election, especially given that, that Sadiq Khan is, is, you know, vulnerable. Beatable, I would have thought. Maybe they've concluded that he isn't. Anyway, Ed is in Plymouth. Ed, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hello, Ed. Um, I think that because it's such, because of all these things, it's just such obvious barefaced lies that whether intentionally or not, people are thinking, oh, well, there's obviously more to it. Leave the EU must know something we don't. Esther they must have a report that we haven't seen, so... Everything's fine, just let it keep going on. You, so, almost like the sort of benefit of the doubt type scenario. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> yeah, but no, because if it was the other way around, people would care passionately, you know? I mean, the, the, you the, remain, the, the official Remain campaign got hit with, a, with a, I think, a £1,250 fine for, for not sending in some receipts. And people were all over that. Like, uh, I mean, this is about money moving, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of pounds moving between organisations, um, one of which was run by a fashion student. I mean, this is really, really fascinating stuff. Um, nobody cares. £1,250 fine. And the Lib Dems got hit with something as well um, at the end of last year. 
and the, the world stopped temporarily. They, they were they were breaches. They were correctly reported, and they were they were banged to rights. And I cared as someone who thinks leaving the European Union is a disaster. I cared that some of the people who were supposed to be representing me had had um, had broken some fairly minor rules. And now we're seeing massive rules being broken, and the people on that side of the argument don't care. Well, yes, because as you say, the Lib Dems and the Remain campaign, as I understand it, actually came out and said, "All right, yes, you know, back, yeah." Fair cop, Gov. Uh, we'll pay the fine. Yes. Rather than say, no, we did. Well, that's because of the scale of the offence, isn't it? If they'd been accused of funnelling hundreds of thousands of pounds into a, 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 an essentially, um, oh, I choose my words carefully, it's a while since I did media law. It did, well, no, giving hundreds of thousands of pounds to a fashion student that nobody had ever heard of and, and claiming that that was somehow above board and. Um, Normal that, that 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 you wouldn't cough to immediately. You'd have to claim that you'd been in some way misrepresented or not uh, not allowed to present your opinions to the commission, wouldn't you? It's the scale of the offence that determines the response. Yeah, absolutely. And if you look at what's happening in the states at the moment, with Mitch McConnell set bef with Obama saying he couldn't get a Supreme Court nomination because it was an election year, yeah. now he's just saying, "Oh no, I never said that." Um, Supreme Court nomination, we're going through it. We're getting the replacement for um, Kennedy. Uh, the, the, no, the, I never said that. No, you're, you know, you're right, aren't you? And, and both sides must be guilty of that. It's not, um, uh, it's not a uniquely right-wing thing, but to, the, the invention of alternative facts kind of is. And, and Ed is right if you're not following the story properly. I mean, word for word, Mitch McConnell now is doing what he condemned the previous administration for doing. I mean, literally word for word. <laughs> uh, David is in Newport. David, what would you like to say? Yeah, hi, James. Hello, uh, David. Mr. Strong, and I do listen to you quite a lot. OK, uh, I can't I really hear you, unfortunately, because of the phone line. I don't know if you've, if you've moved your phone around since, since you rang in. I haven't, no. OK, well, crack on, and we'll see how we get on. Well, what it is, you, you kind of talked about it, the Liberal Democrats being fined and also the Remain camp being fined. Yeah. Now, you can only find them a maximum of 20,000 quid. Yes, that is for, the for each they can find. for each breach. So, so the vote leave could be hit with eighty thousand if 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 they get the maximum for all four. I think the Lib Dems were fined eighteen thousand, and the the Remain campaign was fined one thousand two hundred and fifty. They got about a nineteen thousand pound according fine according to the Financial Times in December. Eight, eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. Liberal Democrats were eighteen thousand, yeah. and the Remain campaign was nineteen. Two yeah. separate. Times. Okay, no, well, I, haven't got, I haven't got the numbers in front of me, but they're, they're, they're despicable. That's outrageous. I do, yeah, I do, but we've either got rules or rules, or rules aren't the rules. Completely agree. Are the rules dependent on the size or not? Yeah, absolutely but agree. Actually, indeed, if we if we go down the route of, of forever having reruns of elections and reruns of referendums, we'll never get anywhere. Um, well, we, we rerun elections every four years, mate. That's kind of a cornerstone of our democracy, every four or five years. Yeah, but you've then got to wait four or five years for it to come round, and then by that... Yeah, but that is called... A, I mean, that is a rerun, and you just said if we reran elections, we'd never have any democracy. We, we do it every five years. It's a cornerstone of, of everything that's democratic about the United Kingdom. Yeah, I understand that, but you've got to wait five years to do it. Well, you don't. They could, she could call an election whenever she wants. I mean, uh, before the Fixed Term Parliament Act was in, I think there were three in 1974, weren't there? Certainly, no, two in 1970. You can do it whenever you want if the if the metrics of Parliament lend it. What did you ring in to say, anyway? I, I feel I've shot you your was, fox. You did a little bit with the Liberal Democrats because I was into this with rules of rules. We can't have rules... Yeah, well, rules I'm, really, I'm, 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 I'm really sorry about that. I agree with you that they were bad as well. So it's all the more reason to, to, to call the whole thing off and do it again, if you're, if you're suggesting that they, they sort of cancel each other out. Both sides lied. Both sides fibbed. Both sides... Oh, but hang on, the will of the people, mate. Yeah, I don't you know. You forgot about I, the will I, I, of the it, people. It, it, yeah, the will of most of the people that bothered to go and vote is probably the correct statement. Yeah, so I would guess then you have to look at the scale of the offences. And if there were four on the side of vote leave and they won, arguably the uh, manipulation that they exerted upon the electorate would be greater than the other side. But you're right, the other side did it as well. So that's all the more reason to, to call the whole thing off and do it again, ensuring that everyone obeys the rules. Unless you're suggesting that because the rules were broken, the result somehow becomes even more reliable. No, 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 I just think it's a bloody right old pickle we get ourselves into, isn't it? I'm not going to argue with that, but, you know, those of us who have been describing the pickle in excruciating detail since pretty much the morning after the result came in are a little irritated by those who've taken over two years to recognise the essential pickliness of the pickle. I am the